everyone, welcome back to Show Me How to Win. Wow, Gen Con 2018, and we are here checking out Rurik Down of Kiev. Just been kickstarted. Next to me is John Brieger. He is the de developer on this game. And so, John, can you tell me a little bit about Rurik? Uh, so, Rurik is a area control game featuring an innovative new action selection mechanism. Uh, called auction programming. Uh, you're going to be selecting your actions with numbered advisors on this strategy board. So let's say I wanted to move and I put this three down. Uh, if someone else then puts a four down on move, they'll bump me down the track. So I'm doing the same action, but less powerfully. After all of the advisors are placed out, we have to perform our actions in numbered order. One, two, three, four, five which means that the five action that's the most powerful and is most likely to go at the top of the column is also the last action that you're gonna be doing in the round. So there's a lot of deep little strategies about how you place your bids, how you perform your actions out on the board, how you try to become the ruler of Kiev and Rus. Okay, so I like games with the auction me mechanism. And uh, as I understand, you can actually use, also use money to bump your people up, right? Correct. So you have these coins and you can use them to place bribes. And the nice thing about bribes is let's say uh, that Jackie had bid a five here. I could place my three with three coins and it's like it's a six. And that's going to bump Jackie down. When it comes time for me to perform my action, I actually get to do them still by the printed number. And so bribing is also a way to take powerful actions early in a round. I see. So, in general, make sure you keep number five and number one last so that your opponent doesn't figure out what you're going to do exactly on that turn, right? Correct. And that's why we call it auction programming. You are setting up a program in a sequence, and you want to make sure that you're not remaining predictable for your opponents. If they can anticipate what your program is going to be, that's going to end up very, very poorly for you in the game. Okay, what about these cards? I see there's a whole bunch of cards here, and that's these has to do with the scheme action, right? Yeah. So tell me, John, what do the cards do? How can they help me win at Rurik? Uh, so the scheme action allows you to draw these bonus scheme cards, which are kept hidden from your opponents. Uh, and these are just little versions of the actions on the other five columns. Uh, the nice thing about schemes is it allows you to perform two very different actions at the same time. So if I have my two on move and my three on attack, all of my opponents know that I'm going to move and then attack. But let's say I have a scheme card hidden. I could move and attack in the same turn, or I could be moving and building. And it lets you build these little combos so that people can't predict your actions and surprise people and maybe even mess up their whole program uh, and throw them off course. Ah, OK. So make sure you pay attention to what people, what your opponents are putting out, if they put out one and five, then you can figure out what they're doing and keep your one and five until last so that people don't figure out what you're doing. And also use scheming cards effectively, right? Absolutely. Okay, thank you, John, for showing us how to win at Rurik. Check this game out. Bye.